Hello, this is Rogers Redding, National Coordinator of Football Officials. I'd like to welcome you to this fourth in the series of special videos that we're creating, particularly for our media partners. Again, the games from the last couple of weeks have given us some interesting plays that will illustrate various aspects of the rules. I hope you'll find this video helpful as you prepare for your games this coming week. This first play is an interesting one near the goal line where the ball carrier reaches the ball across the plane of the goal line and it's taken out of his hands by a teammate. This is legal because once the ball crosses the plane of the goal line, it's dead. If this had happened in the field of play, of course, this would be a forward handoff, which is illegal. Number 73 acts like he's got a touchdown, but of course the ball is already dead. But just see that this is a, a dead ball once it crosses the plane of the goal line, and this is a legal play and a touchdown by the ball carrier himself. Here's a play that illustrates a situation where it is legal to block an opponent in the back. Most of the time, blocking in the back is a foul. But if a player is trying to get to the ball carrier or get to a ball that he is eligible to touch, then a block in the back is legal. On this play, you'll see that the punt receiver muffs the kick. That makes it legal for a player of the kicking team to touch the football. And so now he is allowed to block in the back in order to get to that football. So... The action by the kicking team player here is legal, even though it is a block in the back. This play is a nice example of a good call for a horse collar tackle, and this is textbook horse collar tackle action. You can see that the player intercepts the ball, goes down the sideline, and the opponent grabs him by the collar and jerks him quickly to the ground, and that's a foul. And this is exactly the kind of play that the rule was written to address. Because the targeting fouls have gotten so much attention, I always like to include a player or two to show legal hits on defenseless players. Here's a good illustration. This is a vicious hard hit, very strong collision by the defensive back, but it's perfectly legal. You can see from the replays that he gets his head out of the way. The action is at the chest area, not to the head neck area. So even though this is a very hard hit, it is perfectly legal. This play illustrates a good example of offensive pass interference. Watch the two receivers to the left of the formation at the bottom of the screen. The player that's highlighted crosses over in front of his teammate, blocks on the opponent who is there to defend against the pass, and the second receiver, the outside receiver, cuts off that block to catch a pass. So a very good example of offensive pass interference where the offensive player blocks on a defender to allow either himself or a teammate, in this case a teammate, to catch a pass. Pass interference, offense, number nine. The penalty is declined, fourth down. The try is good. During the try, personal foul leaping on the defense. That penalty will be enforced on the overtime, second, second period of overtime. This last play illustrates a foul that we don't see very often, a violation of the so-called leaping rule. The rule says that it is illegal for a player to run from beyond the neutral zone, leap to try to block a field goal or try attempt, and then land either on an opponent or on a teammate. This is a personal foul, and this one occurs in an overtime, so the penalty is carried over to the next overtime. So instead of that next overtime starting at the 25-yard line, the penalty carries the ball half the distance of the goal, and it's begun at the 12-and-a-half-yard line. 